So Flatpak 1.0 was released earlier this month, and I feel like now is a pretty good time to revisit the video I did last year in March talking about Flatpaks and Snaps. When I did that video last year, Flatpak was still very much in beta, and Snap was version 2 point something, which is, funnily enough, the same version it is now, though the minor release has incremented, the major release is not. So I'm not going to do any kind of like overview of flat packs or snaps or anything like that for this video. Instead, I want to talk about my thoughts and feelings about these alternate package management systems and formats, and particularly the things I think that are wrong with them. Because it's been just about a year since Flatpak was announced and Snap has kind of been around for a little bit longer. And the hubbub in the community when they were released was, these new formats were just going to take over all of the old formats and you won't be installing stuff through app, you'll be using Snap or Flatpak or whatever. And I think we can all agree, that completely didn't happen. But that's not to say these formats or management systems are bad, they're just different. So let's talk about why they're different and why they aren't quite as good as the traditional package management systems. Starting with the thing I think I see most people complain about when they use snaps or flat packs, styling. I've seen many a Reddit post people talking about how the styling is broken on their favorite snap or flat pack app. Now I remember last year when I first started using snaps, the styling on lots of apps was so broken that the application was basically unusable. And I can say today, a year later, it's still broken. Not for all apps, a lot of apps have actually improved and the styling works. But still, there are a lot of apps where the styling is either completely and totally broken, or just kind of broken. So looking at VS Code here, it looks okay. And then you go to open a file and you can see that, nah, the styling is kind of broken. Which is weird because VS Code uses classic confinement, which means it's not actually confined at all. So I have no idea why VS Code can't use the system styling when it's not confined. On the Flatpak side of the house, they appear to have this problem completely solved. Now I'm not 100% sure how this mechanism works, but when you install a Flatpak, it somehow determines what theme your system is using, or maybe it picks a default theme, I'm not sure, but it installs the theme package and has all the applications optionally use that theme. So you don't wind up with applications with broken themes. Now this doesn't always work. However, when I was going through FlatHub looking for applications with broken themes, I couldn't find one. So yeah, it seems like Flatpak has this problem under control, but Snaps, despite being version two, which is, you know, out of beta, styling is still broken. So that's fun. The next thing I want to talk about with these formats and management systems is a bit ambiguous, but it is basically the distribution method, versions, and quality control or lack of quality control. So an application that the Snap Store promotes on their front page is Minecraft. I mean, that's kind of a big deal, right? None of the big popular Linux distributions include Minecraft as part of their software repository. So if you want to get Minecraft on your system, you usually have to go to the Minecraft website and download it or get it from the AUR or something like that. Or you could just use Snap. So you go to the website, get the Snap, or use the Ubuntu store, whatever. Fire it up and right off the bat it says that your launcher is out of date. Now the funny thing about this is, the launcher can't update itself like it would if you installed it normally because it's a snap. So there's already a problem here. Now if all you wanted to do was play Minecraft single player like in your own world, that's great. But the funny thing is, multiplayer is completely broken. Like it doesn't work at all because the snap doesn't have permission to reach out to the authentication servers. So my question is how the hell is this stable application promoted on the front page when it has a glaring bug like this? Now I have another similar example to this as far as versioning goes. Take a look at Spotify on the Snap Store. It's an official app that's endorsed by the company. The version available from the Snap Store is version 1.0.88.353 and so on. I'm actually using this particular Snap. It works perfectly fine. All of the features work straight out the box. It's great. Now Spotify is also available as a flat pack from FlatHub. We'll hop over to FlatHub and we see that the version is different. It is 1.0.80. The developer is Spotify, however the publisher is FlatHub Maintainers, not Spotify. Now I prefer using flat packs over snaps, however I can't use this snap because the Facebook integration doesn't work and it hasn't worked for some time. So that goes back to quality control. 
It's up to a distributed and small group of people to maintain this, and it's up to them to do it. And I know that the community could step in and do it also, but eh, the open source community is fickle to say the least, and nobody's done it. So Spotify is just one example of that. OBS Studio is another really good example. The version of OBS on the Snap Store was released August 7th. The version of OBS in FlatHub was January 22nd. And the actual latest version of OBS was released five days ago as of this video. So it's just all over the place. You don't know what you're going to get. Now the last two issues on my list pertain directly to Flatpak, which is a shame because as I said before, I actually prefer Flatpak over Snap in most cases. The first issue is the size of the damn flat packs themselves and their dependencies. Flat packs use this concept of a runtime, which packages pretty much all of the dependencies as a flat pack itself. It's an interesting idea because it encourages code sharing and don't repeat yourself and all these other really great paradigms, but the problem is that these packages are fairly large. Now the argument I've seen for this is that in this day and age, size doesn't really matter because space is almost free and eh, whatever. Fact of the matter is, they're big, and that's a disadvantage when compared to something like AppImage or Snap. The other issue I have with Flatpak, and this is the biggest issue I have with it, is the update mechanism. You have to run Flatpak update to update your applications. So I'm running OpenSUSE, if I want to update my applications through the terminal, I use Zipper. Or I could use Yast to update everything. But Flatpak, you have to use Flatpak update. Now in other distributions where the integration between Flatpak and the system is seamless, you can use GNOME software to do it. But most distros do not integrate that well, OpenSUSE does not integrate that way, so in order to update my Flatpaks, I have to use the console, and that sucks. Snaps have a huge advantage here, because there is a Snap daemon that runs that automatically keeps all of your applications installed through Snap up to date. In my opinion, that is the best way of handling updates for user land applications. And it's a shame that Flatpak doesn't do something like that. So to summarize my feelings on snaps and Flatpaks, and I guess to a lesser extent app images, I think that adding new formats and new package management is generally bad for the Linux desktop community in general. For servers or more specialized, maybe embedded applications, I could see how it may work but there's this overarching problem in the Linux community and especially the Linux desktop community of fragmentation and adding more standards, more formats, and more bullshit does not help anybody. The idea that these new formats were going to somehow take the Linux community by storm and everybody after a year or two years, whatever, was going to be installing all of their applications through snaps or flat packs was absurd to begin with. And now we're a year later and most people don't even use them. So yeah, that summarizes my thoughts and feelings, opinions, perspectives, whatever on all of these alternate package management systems and formats. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Check out the description of this video for more information on how you can support me and the channel. I appreciate all of your support and thanks for watching.